everything thus far. Right now it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to Sister Rose. Please welcome her as she comes. God is good. Couldn't make it without it. 
I'm going to preach this morning to you a little while about the backslider's honeymoon. Yeah, so you want to backslide, I'm going to tell you how long your honeymoon will last. Yes. Because sometimes when people backslide, they feel like they, they've just, you know, cut their wings and they're just flying. Real soon, you won't have any wings. It's a fact. Listen to it. The St. Luke, the 15th chapter says, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. I want to preach to you a little while this morning. There's probably not a person in this building that at, at some point in your life, you, you dreamed of becoming this age and being able to go out and do some things. We all felt, well, when I get grown, when I'm grown, we all said that. Because we were under rules and regulations of the parents. And, the, and we didn't particularly like that. As we get older, we don't like rules. We don't like to be controlled. We don't like people telling us what to do. So this boy, he says, I don't want to wait till you die to get my inheritance. Isn't that terrible? Give me all of it that belongs to me now. Because I'm ready to get out of here. I want to live my life and do what I want to do, how I want to do it. His father really should have never given it to him. Parents should take a stand and say, no, there's some things that I know you would like to have, but I'm not going to let you have it. I don't think it's good for you. But in many times you find parents giving in and saying, okay, go ahead and take it. But if you live in this world a little while, it don't take you long to find out that kids don't make good decisions. That's why we're parents. That's why we have to say, oh, wait a minute, not now. Well, you shouldn't do that today. And they feel like they know everything. Once they become, my grandmother didn't even allow us to say the word teenager in the house. Because back in the day when you got to be a teenager, you was all of that. And she said, don't use that word in my house. It makes you, make you think you're grown. I don't think I felt I was grown, but I sure would like to use that word. But I couldn't use it around her. This young boy, his father gives it to him. And the scripture says, he took a journey into a far country. I'm getting away from wherever I live. St. Louis, that's where I'm from. I want to get out of this town. Move on to greater things. So I thought. My grandmother, I said she was old-fashioned. She didn't really know what was going on in the world. And she's telling me all about this stuff won't work for you and all this. I'm thinking, you're not a part of this age group. <laughs> My grandmother was 70-something years old. 70 some years old. And I thought, she's always telling you what's not going to work. Boy, she was right, but I thought I was right. So I said to her one day, I said, well, Grandma, if I, if I don't date somebody, then how would I know who I want to marry? She said, I'm going to tell you something. 
She said, all the men are full of hell. I said, wow. And then I thought about her man, my granddaddy. I thought, well, why did you get with him if they all the same? And not only did you get with them, you had 10 kids. That made me think something went right. Because I was very curious as a girl. I mean, you tell me something, I'm going to pick through every detail of it. And, but I knew I had to do it in my own mind because she wasn't hardly going to buy that. And so I thought, okay, I'm thinking about the prodigal son here. He goes out and what he does, he finds, a, he finds women. He boozes it up. Time you get away from home, you think you know what's going on. I was very young when I ran away from home. I ran away at 16, 15 and a half. And I thought, I'm not living like this no more. Got to go to church every Sunday. And they always talking about God. I need to get out of here. My, my grandmother, everybody listened to her. Everybody grown. No matter what she said, they listened to her. So she put my uncle on the door in a chair and says, don't let Rose out. I didn't tell her I was leaving. So I went to the door when she left. And my uncle, everybody was scared of her. Because when she said something, boy, it was law. And so I said, Uncle Percy, I need you to move. He said, I can't move from here. He said, Mama said, stay on this door. I thought, I'll find a way out. So I waited a little while. I thought, he's going to have to get some water, a bathroom, or something. <laughs> and when he does, I'm out of here. Sure enough, he moved. And sure enough, I ran. It didn't take me very long to find out this ain't the way I thought it was. You know, sometimes when you're not in a situation, you can say all kind of things, but if, if you, once you face it and get in the middle of it, you think this is not good. When I went to the club, tried to pretend I was older than I was, because they ask you for that when you go in the club back in the day. I don't know what they do now. And I was scared to death. Sitting in the club, people partying, Smoke is everywhere. I thought, I'm going to hell. <laughs> That's all I can think about. My grandmother told me, if you don't do it right and you don't go to church, you're going to hell. And I just thought, That's all I can think. All this smoke is in here. Well, this looks like hell to me. So I leaned over to my older sister and I said, Ma, do you think that this looks like hell? She goes, no. It just say hell. Go on and have a good time. I didn't fit. They were drinking booze and, and carrying on, acting crazy. Didn't fit. I kind of think of the prodigal son. He went a long way from home. I don't want any, I don't want any, I don't want to be close enough that anybody, my father, anybody can come where I'm at. But that far away was a bad move. You know, because if you if you're young and you leave home, uh, at least if you don't go too far away, somehow you go back home and get some chicken. But, <laughs> but if you're a long ways away, when you get hungry, ain't nobody going to feed you. But he thought he was living it up. See, it's amazing to me how people can go through this stuff and, and seem like they're really living it up. But when you get broke and there's no money, there's nothing there. Where's all these friends that call themselves your friend? When you had money, they was your friend. But they ain't now. You look for them, they're not there. Who are, what's going on with these people? Yeah. And so now he finds himself wanting. So the honeymoon backslider, one of the things I want, I want to bring to the table is a sense of freedom. God, it's going to feel good to be out here by myself doing this thing. You're not going to like it for long. Hang on. And it also says a feeling of I want to party. I want to live it up looking for pleasure. Number three. I don't have to listen to no rules anymore. Nobody tells me what to do. I'm doing what I want to do. That's what they say. He wanted to party. That's why he, he had righteous living, uh, blowing his money with, with prostitutes and, and all of these things. But and he, got, he wasn't where nobody could give him counsel or direction. He didn't want that. The honeymoon now has 
is over that short time. So now he's broke, he's alone by himself. Where is your friend? It's nothing worse than being alone in the world and don't have a friend. So he now realized he don't have any money to buy any food. I'm hungry. And I have nowhere to go. What do I do? You were enjoying it for a while, but it was very short. Very short. So he went, he joined himself to that country, this faraway country. And he got so hungry, the man sent him to feed the pigs. And the scripture says he got so hungry till he almost joined the pigs eating their food. That's about as low as you get. So he keeps going, doing what he wants to do. Nobody was there to give him anything, to help him out. He realized being away from home, being at home wasn't so bad after all. You know, the place you wanted to get away from right now, you find out it ain't really that bad. It was at home don't look that bad. You're hungry. You broke. You have no friend. All of a sudden, you start reminiscing about home and what you had there. But now it's gone. So he said, boy, ain't nobody in my dad's house hungry right now. They got plenty of food. They, can, they got enough food to feed the, all the servants and everybody. So, but I starved with hunger? What he made, when he made a good decision, when he got up and said, I think I'm going back home. So every person in this church, at some time, you backslid from something. See, the Lord told Israel, I will heal your, your, your uh, many backslidings. So somewhere in your life, you made a dumb decision. Somewhere you didn't want nobody to tell you nothing. You didn't need that. I'm grown. I know what I want to do. I'm not stupid. Yes, you are. But except you don't know it yet, but you're getting ready to find it out. So... Uh, he's looking at this situation thinking I'm going home. I'm going to tell my dad that I don't, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore because I've went out. I spent my, my inheritance. I got rid of everything. And now I'm hungry and I'm naked. And I have no clothes. I have no friends. And could you let me come back home? But before he ever got to his father, the scripture said his dad saw him afar off. And when he saw him, he was overjoyed with that. Every person that ever left God, if you return back, he's going to be happy to see you. He said there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repentance than a whole bunch of righteous people. So if you're in a position where you know you messed up, you have to say I messed up because I messed up. Not because my family did it. You know, people like to put it on somebody. Somebody's the cause of this. No, you are the cause. Until you take responsibility for who you are and where you are, you'll never get better. <laughs> the best decision he ever made was when he said, I think I'll go home to my father. So whatever things that he wanted by getting his inheritance early, none of it mattered anymore because he didn't have any of it. Riches, Solomon said in the word, he said, riches fly away. They have wings, they fly away. That's why people don't know where their money went. So unless you make some good decisions in your life, you won't have no money. So he said, I'm going home. There may be people in this room this morning that say, Sister Rose, you know what? I'm in that position. I didn't want to listen to my mother, my father, if you had a dad at home, whatever. I... I felt the same way. I wanted to do things my way. See, the thing is, we don't know what to do. We think we do, but in actuality, you don't know what to do. You find out the world is not is a different place. You're looking at it through the window of home, but when you go out there, it's a whole different story. Teenagers want out. Let me out. I'm doing my thing. After a while, you look like a bum. You got no money, no friends, no nothing. And then you feel sad and depressed. And you don't, but he says, Father, look, I'm not asking you to bring me back as your son, but just bring me back as one of the hired servants that's working here. That's all I need. 
his father opened his arms to him and kissed him and hugged him. Said, my son that was lost is now home. That's the way God looks at all of us. I know you messed up. You've done some crazy things. And you thought you were smart all the time. In actuality, you're dumb as a bag of rocks. So I'm looking for something. I'm looking to somehow uh, to go through this situation. I, it messed up. I thought, my grandmother, she don't know what she's talking about anyway. She's old. She's not in touch with our times. I said, stupid. Got out there. I soon found out very quickly, this is not good. I was, sometimes didn't know where I was going to stay. I always knew where I was going to stay when I was at home. But no. It wasn't long before I was asking my sister different questions. And she said, Rose, you're too young to be out here. I said, no, I'm not too young, honey. I'm looking for something. I don't have a clue what it is, but I, 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 I know what I'm doing. No, I didn't. Soon met this man. It ended up being my husband. Great, great husband. A fool for a boyfriend. <laughs> and I was so green. I knew nothing about the world out here. Never been out. Been at home. Only place we went to school and church. So now I'm out here and I fall in love with this man. Everybody tells me I'm not in love with him, but I know that I am. My heart skips beats. I, I get excited when I see him. I've got all these feelings, emotions going on. My brother said, Rose, you don't want to mess with him. He ain't no good. I said, oh, yeah, there's some good somewhere. <laughs> Stupid? Oh, no, there's some good. Sure he was. He was supposed to be getting ready to get married to some girl, which I said, that's not going to happen. <laughs> now, I ain't been out there, so I don't know the ropes in, in doing certain things and making thing, doing things different. And, and how, do you, how do you actually get this man uh, to be with you and leave the woman he's supposed to marry? I thought, she's not a problem. <laughs> I really believe that in my heart. So I found out that I found out where she she was part family, really, but not to my husband, but to her her father, who was married to to uh, my my husband's uh, Amy, was her husband's brother. So I found out where she was. I go to find her. I go out there. I said, "Hi, how are you? <laughs> you know, I'm fine. I was sizing up." I don't see what, what, what do you have that I don't have. So I go there, and she's talking crap. And then she says about Charles, I said, you and Charles getting ready to get married? She said, I don't think so. He's not ambitious enough for me. I thought he's, he's, he's doing well to me. <laughs> That's one thing. You don't think he's ambitious. I think he's fine. <laughs> and so I listened to her. I said, well, I just wanted to come out and get a chance to meet you and talk to you a little bit. I sized her up in a moment. I never was slow at learning nothing. And this was one of those times that I thought, I don't have nothing to worry about with her. So I left. During that time, and I'm going to get back to some other stuff just to give you a little update. During that time, my, my uh, sister was rooming in his father and girlfriend's house. They had a huge house, and she and she roomed there. Well, every so many nights they would go to the they would go to the to the races, to the horse races. So, I said, I don't want to stay alone. Every, I got to babysit my sister's kids. Charles, he's not going. How perfect. How perfect. So I said to him, can you come sit with me at, up, to my, up to your dad's house? I said, my sister, they're going to, to the races that I need. I don't want to sit by myself. I'm out here trying to play a game that I don't even know where it goes. So he comes over, and we sit and talk. 
seemed like a nice guy. I mean, really nice to me. That's what you do when you make decisions on your own and you all messed up, but you don't know you messed up yet because you're too stupid to know that. So I said, okay. He was talking to me and I was talking to him and just a little small talk. And then I said for the moment, I wonder what would it feel like to be kissed by him? Because I ain't never been kissed. I don't know what kissing is about. Stupid. And he said, he don't, he don't want to do Rose, you're so young. He was 21. I was 16. So young. I said, I'm not young. <laughs> it may look like I am, but I'm not. So I said, he said, Rose was very kind to me. He recognized I was young, didn't know a lot of things. He never took advantage of me. He could have, but he didn't. And I went on my way. As time went on, he fell in love with me, and I was already in love with him from the first time I saw him. And they said I didn't because, Rose, you're too young. You don't even understand what love is about. I thought, oh, yes, I do. I'll show y'all. <laughs> well, we were married for 35 years, so you don't have that without love. But everybody's don't turn out quite that way. And so somebody may say, well, Sister Rose, she left when she was 15. That may not work for you because I went through some things as a result of that. I didn't know a lot of things. I, I experienced pain. I experienced difficulties in different areas of my life that I didn't have any control over. So what do I do here? I mean, this is, this is not the way. I know my grandmother said they all got hell in them, but I'm going to find out that he don't have any. And I keep pushing myself and pushing myself. And that's the way the prodigal son is doing the same thing. He's out here partying. He's doing his thing. And, boy, he's having a ball. Home is not even in my mind. I don't even dream about home. But that's going to change. Backsliders, honeymoon. Short-lived. Lots of pain. Lots of suffering. Lots of agony. All these things I learned the hard way. It was difficult. Sometimes I was lonely. Sometimes I wanted to go home. But I couldn't go because I wasn't going to live under those rules. Those rules were not having me no more. Sometimes I didn't know where I was going to sleep at night. Me and Charles used to set up in the, in the restaurant called Trax Restaurant. Sit there all night long, talk to each other. We didn't have a place to sleep. No place to go, but I thought I'm not going home. But my grandmother, they're about to let me have a boyfriend. That's how the question, so I'm not going home. We walked in the snow, feet freezing, three and four o'clock in the morning. No place to no place to go. But you know what? Every person in here this morning, if you leave God or you just push him aside, you don't feel like you need him, I am telling you without a doubt. The one you pushed aside, you're going to need him. You're going to need him. The one you say, I don't need God in my life. I'm too young for that kind of life. You're going to regret that. Those words will come back and torment you from time to time. Boy, what, what's wrong with me? And then you get confused about all your feelings and emotions and where's all this stuff going and where should I be and, oh, I don't know what to do. You have nobody who can counsel you that's older than you that they will live a little while that understands some things that you don't understand. So, what do I do? Number one, you better start thinking about going home. And I'm talking about, I'm referencing home as going back to God. So I better go home. I better go home. I better look at this situation. This thing that I call uh, having fun, it only lasts a short time. All the excitement that people go, I've never, I've never seen so many people who would party down only to be depressed when it was over. They do drugs when they finish with it, it doesn't give them what they need. It's always that void in your life, something missing. What do I do? I have got to somehow find my way back because when you get lost, it's hard to find your way back. I don't know where I'm at. I don't even know why I'm thinking this way. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. But you got to make it back to God. And try it. Before you say that's not for me, try it. Before you say that I'm not looking for that, try it. Because what you think you don't need is exactly what you need. 
So going through this difficult time and, 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 and feeling like that's not what I need in my life, you're going to learn to appreciate your mother and your father's advice. You're going to learn to appreciate it. See? When, when, when God was dealing with, with Peter, he said, Peter, he said, the Lord, I mean, he said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. He decided, he, he means to take you away from me. There may be people here this morning, somewhere in your mind thinking, I don't think I can continue. I don't think I can continue to go down this road. You better stay on this road. This is a good road. The minute you make the exit, everything bad outside of that, you're going to run into it. You got to make up in your mind, wait a minute, I shouldn't have exit back there. Where am I going? What's down here? I don't like to get off on any exit that I'm not sure where I'm going. So when it, when it, when it comes to God, you got to stop for a minute and say, you know what, I exit too quick. I should not have taken that exit because where I'm trying to go, that, that exit won't take you there. You got to look at your life and say, wait a minute. I got, to, I, got to, I got to get myself. And you know what you, happens to you sometimes? You end up getting tangled up with the wrong person. Somebody else is going way out here and, and stealing and robbing and, and drugs and booze and all this stuff. Wrong person. Bad communication corrupts good manners. So if I get with the wrong person, that's how I end up doing wrong things. You get with somebody that's good, that's decent, that have some morals, you'll become like that. But if you don't, you won't. I always told my kids, stay with the kids in school that's making straight A's. Do not get with the ones that's flunking, that's not going to make it anyway. They have no goals. They have nothing out here they plan to do. Don't hook up with them. They lead you down the wrong path. Should I say no? Yes, you should say no. But you don't have the power to say no until you find God. When you find him, you're able to stand up and be strong and say, no, I can do this. Many people will tell you that you can't. Many people say, you don't want that God stuff. You go to church all the time. Don't you get sick of that? No, 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 no. Church is a good place. It's a good atmosphere. It's a place where you're blessed. Now, Peter, he was, he really loved, he really loved God. And he said, when Jesus told him, he said, uh, Peter, uh, the devil desires to sift you as wheat. He said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, convert your brethren. Because he knew he wasn't going to make it. He was too, he moved on, on an impulse immediately for every little thing, even the good got to slow down. But when you get to running fast in this world, you're going to run into something. You're going to find yourself I ran right into what I should have come into. You're going to see all the things that's wrong. This is not working for me. Then you end up hooking up with some guy and you end up getting married to him and that's a big mistake. And, and he was crazy when you, when you met him. He's going to be crazy when you marry him. It's going to go from one thing to another and you're saying, my God, how am I going to get out of this? You can get out. I tell people all the time, hold on. My daughters, Juana and Nisi, they waited. They had never been kissed, never had sex with nobody. They were 20, were y'all 26 when you married? 24. Um, and my daughter, my oldest daughter, kept saying, Mama, pray for me a husband. I need a husband. Well, she's really saying, I need some sex. Pray for me. That's what she's really saying. I said, I'm praying for you that God will help you hold on. He's coming. Like, Mama, I'm 26 years old, 25, whatever. How long am I have to wait before I get kissed? I said, It'll be, it, the time is coming. You'll find out the kiss ain't as great as you thought. See, we, we, we portray sex to the younger generation, but you got old folks that's caught up in it too, and that's a, that, that's a tragedy. But these young people, before you have sex, it's like, Oh, my God, this has got to be the thing. You're going to find out real quick. Man, if they act like sex is Pike's Peak. And when you get up there, there's a high higher than that. That's a lie from the pit. It's not true. Does sex feel good? Of course it does. But it's not going to fill you, fill your life up. When you get through having sex, what you going to eat? I want to know what kind of much grocery I got. 
Can I pay the bills? When all that's done, what you got next, baby? Yeah, I just, that's all I need. Where is the, all the real life that surrounds sex? All that surrounds, this is the whole world around it. And you caught up with one thing. My oldest daughter was, who was going to date, was shortly dated a brother that was in the church. And um, I said, you need to get away from him. He has no ambition. He's happy with nothing. He's not willing to fight. You shouldn't be with him. She came back and said, Mama, she was trying to explain it to me. I said, honey, I really want to agree with you, except I can't. You won't be happy with that boy. I know you're not. Why, you, you experienced some things with age. You started feeling and learning things, watching other people's lives, watching people fall down, watching people mess up. Live long enough, you'll see a lot of stuff. And so when, when she leave the room, I get with my other daughter. I say, I can't, I can't agree with her. And she's sitting there looking like this by that time. She had cut her hair. She had a little short hair up here and uh, one that hang down here. And, and then she's sitting with her head down, half her face covered up. And I'm thinking, you can't marry that boy. I would like to say yes. I would like to say I'm with you. You got my support. Can't do it. I see what you don't see. God sees for you what you don't see. He sees everything. Everything. Finally, I got her calmed down so she could do that. What got to me, you ain't even married yet, but he wants you to go down to a store and look at a waterbed. <laughs> I thought, a waterbed? Y'all going to have a, a, a kitchen table? I mean, what about a living room furniture before you get to the waterbed? Life's more than a waterbed. And I say, where is he at? I said, sweetie, you better be sure that you got your head on straight and that when you get ready to get married, you got to prepare and get some things in place. But quit believing life centers around the bedroom. That's what really troubled me. I said, I, said, I don't understand where is the couch in here. <laughs> Tell me about that. I just, I can't handle that. So she finally let go. And she should have. And I thought to myself, God, help me to help my children to see the right thing. And be humble yourself enough that you listen to your parents' advice and counsel. Do parents always give good advice and counsel? Not always. But for the most part, if they want the best for you, they're going to counsel you good. I told my brother, I told my son that was in the Navy. He's getting ready to marry this girl. He brought her home for, for us to meet her. And I looked at this girl. I thought, oh. You said, well, did you like anybody? The right one. Don't say I'm picking, honey. I'm going to be careful because they're going to end up back in my house and my kid. <laughs> no. I, I get rid of the places where they stay. So when they moved out, I changed their room. This is not your room anymore. This is an office now. This is this. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to be in the know because if, if you ain't, in the, if you don't tell them what's right, they coming back home. They can't find a job, and all of a sudden, here you shelling out money. Yeah, I don't want to shell out once I raise you. Get out. So I told my son, I said, David, something about that girl is not good. And he gave her the engagement ring. I said, it's not good. So I, I got her alone. I said, uh, what was her name? Twala. <laughs> that tells you right there something was wrong. <laughs> so I, I pulled her aside and I said, uh, Twala, I said, are you in love with David? And she said, oh, why would you ask me that? She got real rub. Why did you ask me that? I said, well, it seems like a good question since you're talking about marrying my son. Do you love him? Well, I'm not going to answer that. I thought, well, I said, let me answer it for you. 
I don't think you do. She could talk to him in time of crisis. He was a good ear to hear. Uh, he talked to her about different things. She shared things with him, but this wasn't love. This was more or less a kind of a friendship. And so I went back and told my son, I said, honey, I wouldn't tell him that part. I didn't tell him that part. I said, uh, she's not good. He said, mama, you don't understand. I said, hey, I didn't live this long for nothing, son. That's not it. So he was determined he's just going to marry Twop. <laughs> and I got on my knees. I, that's why you got to have a good saved mother that knows how to pray. I got on my knees. I said, Lord, he's going down the wrong path. Please give him a mind to turn around. Yeah. Let him listen to me. And so uh, after I prayed, the Lord spoke to me. You don't understand this because you've never heard him before, but I did. He said, turn him over to me. So I went back to my son. I said, the Lord said, turn me over to him. He said, she's gone. <laughs> because my son knew for sure that if mama tells you that God said something to her, it is true. It is true. He said, I'm finished. You ain't got to talk to me no more. It's over. And sure enough, he dropped her like a hot biscuit, I mean, and went on his way. He didn't marry her. I was thankful for that. He ended up with a, 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 good, a good wife. She's in this church from the island. She tanked us for everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good girl. And so if you'll take your time, if you think sex is all it is, you're going to be greatly disappointed. I'm telling you, you just live a little while. Live a little while. Think, come on, everybody treats this like this is big, big. It's not like that. Because when you get through having sex, life goes on. All these things, everything, you got to learn how to build a relationship. Build a marriage. Marriage is not perfect just because you married somebody and you say they look like the person I want. Not necessarily are they good. So when that's over, what do you have left? You know what? I counseled with some people and all they had in their marriage was sex. They had nothing else. And I said, so what happens when the children are all gone and you're home with him and all you had in your ma marriage was sex? You don't have a marriage. That's a part of it, but it is not the foundation to build on. you got to do more than that. So the things I've learned in life with the many people that I've counseled with that made bad decisions, that picked the wrong person, I learned some things. I pass it on to others. I know a person that did this. I know a person that done that. It didn't work for them. Then people start paying attention. The people that listen will go further in life than the people who don't listen. I just, no, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. Don't try to run my life. Now, when God told, uh, uh, when Jesus told Peter that Satan desired to sift you as wheat, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And this is what he said to the Lord. Lord, I'm ready to go with you both into prison and to death. He, he didn't know what he's talking about. He wasn't ready for that. But he thought he was. He said, I'll, uh. I'm, I'll die with you. No matter what all the other disciples do, you can count on me. And he betrayed him. He betrayed him. So when Satan came, he got hooked up with the wrong person. More people have messed up their life by who they connected with. Maybe I don't do drugs, but I get with somebody that do drugs, so now I'm doing drugs. I never drink alcohol, but now I'm with people that drink, so I have an occasional drink that could possibly lead on to a whole lot of drinking. So... If you, want your, if you want your life to be full and balanced, you're going to have to put God right in the center. Without him being in the center, you can't make it. Marriages, we have so many divorces in this country. Over 50% of all marriages that's, that happens in America end in, end, end in divorce. So what's wrong? Somehow we tried to build it without God. But if you put him at the center of your life, and you give him your life and you commit yourself to him. He's going to help you get through that. He's going to teach you how to grow. He's going to teach you how to understand things. He'll open your eyes to, so you can learn about each other. Because when you get married, you're just two different people. 
I don't want to be like him, and he don't want to be like me. We all want to be ourselves, and something's got to be compromised during the process. So if you don't let God somewhere get in there, you're not going to make it. It may last a little while, but having, I talked to a lady one time. They had been married 25 years, and she said, I should have been gone a long time ago. Another person said, when I got to the altar, I knew I had made the mistake of my life. Can you believe that? And I took that white gown and held it up and, and run down the aisle. Say, I, I can't do it. If you saw it by the time you got to the altar, you saw some things before the altar. But we don't want to believe that. Surely a person couldn't be that bad. Please think. Don't be the prodigal son that's over here and over there and want to do your thing. Your thing going to run out. What you think is just right is not going to work. I tell you what, I realized when I got out there that my grandmother was right. But I still didn't want her rules. I ain't going to church all my whole life, I said. Some living outside of church like a fool. But then I found out I needed God in my life more than I needed anything or anybody else. And I went to him. And I made up in my mind, I'm going to change my life. I went to God. I said, Lord, here I am. I've done my own thing. I made some bad mistakes. I did it wrong. I didn't listen to counsel from my grandmother or anybody else. I need out. I need out. Out of what? Out of this situation. My life is in, is in toils. All these things. And I got out. He came into my heart. He changed my life. He forgave me of my sins. Put me on the right track. I don't believe Charles and I would have built a marriage for 35 years without God. I just, I just don't believe it. And I look at people today, I had a lady in the prayer line of, oh, maybe some months ago. She said, everything is going wrong in my life. I said, you need God. It stops it and turns it around. You need him. She said, and my boyfriend, he's, I thought, people got more trouble with boyfriends than anything else. Most of the time I counsel people, they say, I, could I talk to you, Sister Rose? It's, it's either a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Immediately. He does this and he does that. And then we've been talking, but he's, he's not listening to me. All these, pay attention to all the small letters. Read the small print. When you're dating this man, whoever you see then, rest assured when you marry him, he is ten times worse than that. He's got all kind of issues. They love you to pieces. You're the finest thing on the planet. He's been looking for you forever. That's what he tells you. Something about this makes you feel like, am I in the dark or something? Because why is what he's saying to me, it just seems to be working with me. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Don't trust your feelings. They can mess you up. I feel this is, this is good. I feel this is, this is work. No, don't mess yourself up. Feelings are very deceitful. Feelings are based upon emotions. So emotions shift all over the place. One minute you feel great, next minute you're in the room crying your eyeballs out. You can't deal with emotions. You got to deal with, with what's real, what's on the plate. And say, you know what? Listen to somebody so you can have a good life. Don't build your life with some, uh, and depending on some man, he's, he's going to always be there. Not necessarily. I told my girls, I said, y'all need to go to college, get your education. Hopefully you don't end in divorce, but if something do end in divorce, you're not staying in a relationship because I can't protect, because I can't uh, do nothing for myself. Have your own independence. Strong women, strong men, because I've seen weak on both sides. So what do I do? I got to feel like the prodigal son. I'm getting ready to eat hog slop here. I'm going home. My mother always, all of a sudden, you know, my mama loves me. She didn't love you at first. Oh, I, I, my mother! Oh, my mother's the greatest thing on this earth. If anybody says she's anybody a good woman, my mother is. You wouldn't be where you are if you'd have listened to that good mother. But I didn't. Then I didn't know. I didn't do that. Come on, you gotta say I don't want to be 
on a short-lived honeymoon. I don't know what's wrong with these people. They live together for 20 years and get married and have a honeymoon. I thought you had been had the honeymoon already. <laughs> You're talking about the honeymoon? Baby, it's done. It's not going to work. So we don't work. I've never seen such long engagements in my life. You say, so, so when are you going to get married? Well, we haven't set the date yet. When you gave me the ring, the date should be with it. Oh, no. Five more years. Y'all ain't married yet? That's what happened to Jennifer Hudson. She got hooked up with this man before her mother got killed and her, and her little nephew. And they were planning the wedding. The wedding got further and further and further out. And everybody said, when are you going to get married? He used that box, and when he got through with it, he dumped it, and now I want a divorce. I don't want you. You're not new. You're not exciting. I've been sleeping with you for 20 years. I'm ready to go on and find me somebody else. You're always looking for something new, but everything new ain't good. See, be sure that I say for a moment, when I make up in my mind, this is what I'm going to do, there's people in this room right now, you know what they're saying? Well, what makes her an authority on everything? <laughs> Life's experiences did a big part of it. <laughs> yes. I'm not letting her upset me because, see, you sitting there right now thinking about your boyfriend, thinking, wow, is that going to happen to me? Yeah. yeah. Listen to what I'm telling you. I'm not trying to belittle you. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Like I try to tell my, my kids. Mess up your life. You want to have something tangible, something you can hold on to, something that's real. Put God at the center of it, and you'll always have what's real that you can always resort to. But without God, you don't have that. Think about it. This preacher's not trying to. I just, you know, some reason I don't go to church. I mean, that's why I don't go to church because these preachers think they know everything. She's up there talking this morning. I thought, well, honey, you don't know John. You don't know what he's like. He's my soulmate. There are no soulmates. Oh, no. So we get caught up in this thing. And then when God sends a message, that's why you're here this morning. I, I'm convinced. There are people in this audience saying, you know what? I better back up from this dude. He, he's kind of off the rocker. If he hits you when he's dating you, he'll beat the crap out of you when he marries you. That's the truth. I counseled with a lady this week, and she said, uh, this man is abusive. I said, has he hit you? She said, off and on. Once you hit me on, I'm off. <laughs> I'm not hanging around for the next. It's true. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so you're going to wait for the next one. See, number one, if he hit me, I'd have beat his brains out. You hitting me? I ain't your kid. But a lot of times they get hit before they even say I do. And they say, well, he was just a little bit upset. That's not his nature. So what are you going to do when he get real upset? Listen. Find, say, I'm going I'm to start. It's early in 2018. Say, you know what? I need to get my life together. That's what God is saying to you this morning. Turn it around. Start on another road. This is not good. It's turning out bad. Look at all the things that has gone wrong in this relationship. If it's wrong dating, it's going to be even wronger married. Because after a short period, you're not exciting no more. Honeymoon always feels like you're really excited. You're going to the highest of the highest of the highest. And the joke ain't going to take you to the low. It's taking you nowhere. Think about it. I've seen people in our church end up in situations like there was a lady in our church that she felt like she, this man probably would make her a good husband. I talked to both of them. The joker was as sorry as they get. She's out working. She holds two jobs. She, go, I mean, she works hard. You know what he did? Sitting at home drinking coffee and watching cartoons. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I got your cartoon. You better get up. 
I'm not going to take care of you. You think a woman should take care of a man? Come on. I can do good by myself. I don't need to marry you and you sit at home and drink coffee and watch cartoons. That says right there, you ain't even beginning to grow up. You shouldn't even be interested in a cartoon. Joker wouldn't get a job. But she thought he was, he was pretty good. Watch this. You know where the problem was with that? Most women and most men are attracted to the same type of person. So if you get rid of him, you find somebody new, and he's all, he reminds you of him. Some of the things he says, oh, you remind me of John. Who was John? If you remind me of John, I'm checking out. Because if you got any resemblance of what I just left, I better move on. I better think about myself, or otherwise I'm going to repeat the same thing over and over again. You come to God, he's not going to abuse you. He's going to be there with you. He won't show up late at night and you wonder where he's at. And you, you're in the bed, but he's not home. He comes in daybreak. He said, where, where you been? Let me get at least call. Tell me where you are. He can't call you. He's with Jenny. <laughs> can't do it. I'm going to call me. Tell, tell you where you are. Tell me where you are. Are you sick? That's not going to be shared with you. Take a look. I used to say no man has any business coming home late at night. When everybody else is going to bed, you should be going to bed. He said, well, no, he just likes to have fun. He's having fun all right. And there you sit in the bed where you find yourself going to the window. <laughs> where is he at? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> He was gone last night too. Oh my God. He comes home and you say, Do you love me or not? He said, and he should say, No. And you all caught up. Don't end up like the prodigal son. The honeymoon is short. You may feel good for the moment, but it won't last. You find out he ain't all he said he was anyway. Who was that I was counseling that told me, Sister Rose? Oh, that was uh, Daisy's son. <laughs> he came back. He had got injured, and, and part of his, they had to uh, operate on some of his brain, but he's real, doing real good now. He came back. He said, I married this woman. I didn't know I married her. Because <laughs> during that time, he, had, he was shipped. Now he's real solid. But he said, and then I got, to the, I got to, the, to, to the bedroom, and she started taking off everything. He said, she had false hip, false boo, everything. He said, he thought, what did I got here? This ain't fine. This is nothing. There ain't no hips present. There's a back. Yeah. <laughs> you think you got this fine chick. Wait till she gets through taking it off. And after a while, the hair goes on the... <laughs> like, what? What is this? <laughs> who was that? It was one uh, story that we heard. I don't know who told me this one. This man was going out, and he was married. I'm getting ready to end. He, he was married. And he went, met this person he thought was a woman. And so he, he went on, got the room and everything. And the man, <laughs> hold up, hold up. I'm getting ready to end this. He gets in the room and the man says to him, uh, let's have sex. He said, I don't have, I can't, I don't have it. He said, you don't have what? He said, I beat your brains out. I got caught in a hotel for what I thought was a woman. You know, I can't do that. I said, Lord, you know what? That would be nice if every person is playing on their wife and the person they get is the same as they, as they are. 
That would be the most beautiful revenge in the world. It's like, wow. That man was so mad. I could beat your brains out. The very thoughts of me are in the room like this. This, this is disgusting. You should have went on home, went to bed, and went to sleep. So if you sitting here this morning and say, Sister Rose, I know you're talking about me. I need to come out where I'm at. It's not a good deal. If you talk to me, I can tell you some things. I have, in these last over 40 years that I've been preaching, you wouldn't believe the stories I've heard. They are uncomprehended. And I'm looking at people like this. I can't believe this. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I come out of counseling sessions like, <laughs> I said to a woman one time, she told me all this stuff her husband was doing, all these things. I said, so he's playing on you? She said, no. I thought, if that ain't playing, I've never heard it. All the things that you do when you're playing, he was doing. She said, no, he doesn't play on me. I said, oh, okay. I come on, I thought, you can smell that. I mean, it is everything that it looks like. He's a player, and he's doing it with you. Check it out. One time I preached the message, I'm closing. said, this couple came to church, and I started talking about how, the, how me and a lot of women, and vice versa, and... I kept saying, telling the things that they, men do sometimes and all that. And first he was sitting with his arm around her shoulder like this, and she was all cold up. I kept talking to her, she said, <laughs> like, she's talking about you. <laughs> all of a sudden she wasn't hugged up no more. She took that arm away from her neck like, that's the truth. That's why some men don't like me. Because I hip them to what's going on. <laughs> this is what's happening. Don't make that decision. God will help you to surrender your life to him if you really want to. You can start today and say, I want, I want to be changed. All you got to do is say to the Lord is, I'm sorry for all the wrong that I've done because we all have done it. We were born in sin. We all been there. I'm sorry. Could you please forgive me? of my sins, come into my heart and live here. And give me the power to say no to sin and yes to God. That's the beginning of a brand new life. If you want to turn it around, if you really want to be happy, if you want to be fulfilled, here it is. It's here waiting for you. He's been waiting for you a long time. He want to fix it so you quit getting hurt over and over again. Emotionally destroyed. Psychologically destroyed. I just, I'm not together. And then we go into another relationship, all broke up in pieces. You can't build off of that. You can't do it. Well, our musician and singers, please come. If you're sitting here this morning and you say, Sister Rose, that's where I am. I feel like you were talking directly to me. That is God speaking to you. Listen to him. He'll turn you around, give you a good life, make things work for you. I had one of the best marriages in the world. He died 25 years ago. Everybody says, I was 49 years old. Don't start counting on the pew. They say, people start counting numbers, <laughs> try to find out how old I am. I said, does she say such a thing? And get out their phone and start adding. <laughs> Can you believe that? Yeah, 25 years ago, I'm the same woman that he left then, and I'll be the same woman when I die. You, I, I, I mean, you didn't want to get married? No, I had such a great husband, nobody could replace him. Nobody. Never got married. Well, surely you had a boyfriend. What did you do with your life? Something that you're not doing. <laughs> yes. It's a great life. We had a great marriage. Go ahead and put your computer up. I'll be 73 years old in a couple of more weeks. 73. 
And you know what? I'm content. You don't have to run down that crazy road. While our musicians are singing and playing, you're sitting there this morning. If you want me to pray for you, that God would help you to change your life, turn things around. So I'm not the, I don't want to finish out the rest of my life making the same mistakes over and over and over again. And don't be so quick to jump into relationships before you understand what's on the, on the table first. Wait and understand, who are you really? Because everybody can look good, I mean, just going out with them. But it's when you say I do, or even when you don't say I do, or when he parks his shoes under your bed, you're going to soon find out. God bless you. We love you this morning. We care about you. If some way that God can help you with your life, give him a chance. I gave him a chance 50-something years ago. I never regretted it. What do you want to do with your life? It can start over and be good. It can start over. With God, he can make it good. So would you please stand, and if you want prayer this morning, we will gladly pray for you. Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Jesus is willing to aid you. Jesus will carry you through. Oh, the Savior. Let them stay here, Walter. Walter, let them stay in this line. Stay in this line over here. I want to pray for y'all. Yes. Jesus will carry you through. Oh, oh, oh ask the Savior to help you. I might not need you. Come and strengthen 